This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Milwaukee, Minneapolis, New Orleans, Oakland, Omaha, Portland, Rockford, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, Seattle, Sioux City, Springfield, St. Louis, St. Paul, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and Victoria. Once a comedian was contracted to a class circuit, his standard of living went up. Circuits were signing vaudeville acts to three- and five-year pay-or-play contracts that guaranteed the acts 40 or more weeks each year, said comedian Fred Allen. These contracts could be used as collateral. A vaudeville performer could present his five-year Keith contract at any local bank and borrow enough money to buy or build a home. Keith Alby and their Orpheum theaters had almost total control of vaudeville. Stein wrote, Their virtual monopoly in the field of vaudeville was akin to that of John D. Rockefeller's in oil, or Andrew Carnegie's in steel. It was an apt comparison. The working conditions of vaudeville were not unlike that of industrial-age factories, with few benefits offered its working class. I played dumps, said Milton Berle. I toiled when I first started to play all the vaudeville theaters. Terrible theaters. I played small towns. One town was so small, the local hooker was a virgin. Three small circuits contentiously fought Keith Alby during the first 20 years of the 20th century. The Pantages Circuit of Alexander Pantages, the Lowe's Circuit of Marcus Lowe, and the Sheedy Time Circuit of Michael R. Sheedy. Keith Alby eventually decided they posed no threat and let them endure. As the magazine The American Mercury explained, It was dollar and a half vaudeville against 25 cent stuff, with the difference in price about equal to the difference in material offered. Comedian George Jessel said of the Sheedy Time Circuit, It should have been spelled shitty. I'll never forget the opening in Gloucester, Massachusetts, in the dead of winter at a little theater at the end of a pier. The dressing rooms were afloat with seawater, and we had to put boards and boxes on the floor to make up and dress. It was a tough time, all right. Theater owners dodged construction costs, cutting corners and employing non-union labor. Shoddy methods caused the death of vaudeville comedian Rube Dickinson in Kansas City. Booked at a brand new venue, Dickinson stepped outside to have a smoke and was standing underneath the large wooden marquee advertising him when it collapsed. As the marquee caved, so too did his head, killed under the weight of his own name. Vaudeville houses had poor ventilation. The vaudeville seasons would end by summer because there was no air conditioning in those days, said Groucho Marx. Mo Howard of Three Stooges fame remembered the Kansas City Orpheum where, quote, the dressing rooms were unclean, unheated, unventilated, and rat infested. In some of the theaters, the manager used the dressing room as a storeroom, often filled with bags of unpopped corn, sometimes up to the ceiling. The bottom bags usually had holes where the rats were nibbling, unquote. W.C. Fields was popular in vaudeville as a comic juggler as early as 1900, but he still referred to his vaudeville days as, quote, the most miserable time of my life. I would never have gone through with it if I had known what it was going to be like. Mental torture is too high a price to pay for anything, unquote. Early vaudevillians had no defense if they got stiffed on pay. We were completely at the mercy of local managers and booking agents, said Harpo Marx. If they ran off with the share of the receipts they had promised us, we had nobody to appeal to. There was nothing we could do except pick up our bags and start walking to the next town before we got thrown in the jig as vagrants, unquote. It was decades before the jet age, and the means of transportation available to a small-time vaudevillian were brutal. The cities and towns could seldom be reached by any one railroad, said Fred Allen. There never seemed to be a direct way the actor could go from one date to another without changing trains once or twice during the night and spending endless hours at abandoned junctions waiting for connecting trains. Through the years, I have spent a hundred nights curled up in dark, freezing railroad stations. Harpo Marx said, Looking back, I simply don't know how we survived it. Those early days on the road were sheer, unmitigated hell. Some acts subsidized a meager income doing odd jobs in show business rooming houses. 
Many of the acts did light housekeeping in little flats, and others lived in boarding houses where for a buck you could get three meals a day and a room with a window, said comedian and...